So, this is a Bronze 3 VOD review of Sekka, the, the Rakan player. So, thank you for the follow. Hi, I'm Perf. So, to start off, when I'm doing VOD reviews, I like to put up objective timers and put the vision on our side because there's no point looking at the enemy team's vision because you don't actually have that in-game. Um, sorry for the movement. Look funky. I play lock cam because I get mocha sickness. Oh, no problem, dude. Okay, so to start off, you are VS a um, Swain Varus Lane. So for your runes, these look fine to me. Uh, looks fine. Um, I don't know if I would take bone playing versus lane because you've got to think about it. So the way bone plating works is you see how it says here the duration is 1.5 seconds. That means the first time they hit you, it does nothing. It procs it, and they have to hit you in 1.5 seconds another one to three times for it to do anything. So aka if Varus hits you with like an E, it just procs it and you get no value. If Varus hits you with a Q, it procs it and gets no value, and it's a long cooldown. If freaking this guy hits you with like an E... He might, if he hits you with a root and you have it up, maybe, but, like, he also could just hit you with a Q to break it, right? So there's lots of stuff that these guys can do to break your bone plane. You won't get value. So you might want second wind. Um, this does scale better into the later into the game, though. So, yep, looks good. And I don't think, I don't mean I don't play this champ, but I wouldn't take ability power. I personally would take CDR over the AP. Um, just so your abilities are up quicker. And also, you probably want to take magic resist into this lane matchup. And the final note about this matchup before we get into it is... Um, you should get, uh, Merc Treads in this game, and the reason is, is because both the bot laners you're facing have CC, right? This guy has his E, which is a stun, or whatever, and this guy, um, has his ulti, which is, uh, also CC, and this guy has a fear, and also they have an AP mid laner, who's an assassin, right? So CD, you're, you're probably looking for Merc Treads this game versus this lane and with their team comp, um, so yeah. Huh. So you took W level 1, so you have to be asking yourself on level 1 on Rakan. Again, I don't main this champ, but I played against Rakan a lot, and I know Rakans don't always start W, sometimes they start Q. Um, you have to ask yourself, what is your goal level 1, right? So is your goal level 1 to all in and fight? Well, I would probably say no, because Zaya level 1 isn't very strong. She gets strong level 2 when she gets her E, but level 1, she isn't a very good all in champ. I would argue that their all-in is stronger since it's a Hail of Blades Varus who can Hail of Blades and then hit you with a Q to proc it. And also Swain's level 1 is pretty strong too. So I would argue you're probably not looking to all-in level 1. You probably are better off taking Q and just looking for poke and healing up your ADC for any poke she takes. Also, um, you're walking around out here, but there's no point. He's giving you control of the bush. So right now you should go in the bush. So every lane you should figure out whether you want to be playing in the bush or not, right? So... Champions who can harass you in the bush, you don't want to, right? Like, say if it was a Thresh Hook, sure. This guy, you don't want to play in the bush because he can yoink you with the stun and pull you, right? If he's in this bush and you're in this bush, he can hit his E and stun you and, like, pull you out. But he's right now positioned over there. So anytime, it doesn't matter what champ you are, anytime they give up bush control, you should take it. Because if you take it now and he tries to walk this way, you can use your W to engage on him and just get, like, a little poke trade in. So, Zion and Rakan have a good level 2 power spike? Yes, they do. So, like, right now, you're just, like, not doing anything. You should be in this bush. In this bush, you can be just putting out way more pressure than them actually seeing you. So, he just used this thing. So, one big um, key um, uh, um, thing. So, I'm, I, I want to try and not just call out people's mistakes, but teach, like, key concepts. So, a key concept in League is abuse cooldown. So, it's level 1. He only has one cooldown. He just used his E. So, you can see here, it's a 10-second cooldown. Something you have to keep in mind is people's cooldowns. So for 10 seconds now, you should be looking to all in. You took W level 1, and this guy has no spell. So you should be walking into this bush and chilling, and then walk into this bush, and you should try to W, because if you can just W on their ADC, auto attack him once, and walk away with, uh, with uh, oh, you don't have Aftershock. So yeah, even more questionable. You didn't even take Aftershock, and you took W level 1. Um, very low value. Like if you're going to take level 1 W, it means you're level 1 going all in, and you'd want Aftershock for the level 1 all in. Um, but yeah, you should be just taking control of the bushes, walk up to here, and go all in on their ADC if he missed positions, because you have 10 seconds, right? So you can see what I'm saying right now. You're not abusing the fact that this guy has no cooldown. You should be walking into this bush, and if they walk backwards, you walk into this bush. If they don't walk backwards, you just, like, go in, or you just do something. You have 10 seconds to exert pressure on the lane, and you're not abusing that right now. Even Forest, you're just standing behind your ADC during it, right? So now his E's back up, so now you have to play, like, his E's up. It's fine. Go in, go in, go in, go in, go in. Nice. Really good, really good stuff. Ignite right away, by the way. So if you didn't know, 
Ignite applies 60% Grievous Wounds. Um, it gives you vision for 5 seconds, and then the target uh, applies 60% Grievous Wounds. So what Grievous Wounds does is it reduces healing effects. So they get 60% less healing. So anytime you all in on an ADC, you always want to instantly ignite, because the whole idea is you want to ignite before the ADC uses heal. So this ADC just got a 90 HP heal off. But if you had ignited him, he would have only healed for about like 45 or something like that or 40, 35, right? You would have canceled out an extra 60 healing from him had you ignited before he used heal. So you always want to ignite before the enemy ADC heals. But I like the fact that you realize that you could just go on and you did. Again, you're playing super passive. Look at Var. He's playing passive too. Play more aggressive, man. Like, look at, the, look at this guy. So every champion has like a range of threat. And it's like an imaginary circle. So this guy's range on this ability is about here, right? So his imaginary threat circle is here, right? So if he's positioned back here and his imaginary threat circle is here, you should be positioned right here. The idea is you always want to be standing on the edge of the other player's engage range and just sort of dancing around their engage range, right? So his engage range is here. So you should be right here, right? And Varus's range with his E poke is about here. But if, he, if you're standing here and he goes to EU, you can always go W him and then she can follow up with a QE pull, right? So you should be positioned around here or even like here, right? Or even in the bush here or walk into this bush here and make them pull back. But there's an imaginary circle and it's about this big, right? So that's what you should be looking at. And you should look at every champ, right? So like if we look at it, like a Rakan, his engage range is about here. It's a bit shorter than Swain, I would say, probably. But it's about here is like the imaginary circle for you. Zaya, her imaginary circle is about this big, but it's not like a hard circle that you have to stay away from. She has to hit, a, like her engage range, I mean, she can throw a Q there, auto attack and pull it feathers through. It's about there, but her auto attack range is about here, right? Um... Should you apply it to all lanes? Yes, all these things I've said so far go to every lane. It doesn't matter. You should always be abusing cooldowns if the enemy uses their cooldowns. Unless you don't know where the jungler is, you should be abusing them back while their cooldowns are down. And you should always be trying to play around people's engage range, right? So if we go look at mid, a casted in level 1's range is about this minion distance. Is the distance that he can use his Q, right? So that's about the circle of Cassidy's range, right? And Lee Sin's range is about here it's about this far it's a big circle but it can be blocked by minions right so like that's like this lane right and if we look at top lane darius's engage range it's about it's pretty short it's about this circle right but his is and that's where he can pull you so you should be if you're playing ergot versus this darius you would want to be standing right here right right where you're out of range for him to pull you but you're in range to land your own q and your own autos right but ergot's range of pressure is about like this big because that's the range of his q Right? His engage range is about the same as Darius's, though. So every champ in League has a different imaginary circle around them based on their auto attack range, their spell range, and you just want to try and abuse those circles and stand right on the edge of it. And what it does when you stand right on the edge of it is you start playing a mind game, right? So if you're standing on the edge of the imaginary circle, if their ADC takes one step up to get in range of you in that circle, and you take one step towards them, now you're in range of your engage, right? So it's kind of this thing where you go like, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then as he moves forwards, you move forwards too. And you close the gap and you can go in, right? So back and this is Rakan, this is the ADC, right? So you're walking in and out of his range. And then when he moves forwards, you walk towards him and now you're in range, right? So you just want to kind of keep tethering the range of his max range. And when you see a good chance to go in, you can kind of go in on him as he goes in on you. Is the idea of it. So we don't know where their jungler is. Um, I didn't watch the start of the game, but most games junglers path towards top side in this t kind of a game, right? So most likely he's top side, but I wasn't paying attention. I'm assuming you weren't paying attention. So at this point right now, we should probably be getting some wards down. Um, you and your ADC both have wards. So this is a perfect time for you guys to kill these two minions. And if your ADC won't do it with you, it sucks. But ideally you place like a ward right here. Your ADC puts a ward down on the scuttle crab. Right, because if their jungler does the scuttle crab as it spawns, you'll see him. And if he goes to the top side scuttle, then you'll have vision here when they do it. So ideally, you and your ADC would get a ward here and here, and that'll allow you to play aggressive. Because there's not really a way for their jungler to get behind you if you have a ward here and here. Ideally, but if your ADC doesn't ward with you, you can just ward right here by yourself and just have vision here. But you can't play super aggro without vision in this bush. Uh, 13 by the 315. Yes, exactly. At 315, the scuttle crab spawns. So you want to be getting vision of the scuttle crab around then. Right, so as this wave is crashing, see how you guys are still playing aggro and you're moving up? This is bad because your jungler is up here going to this scuttle crab. 
And there's a high chance their jungler's on this scuttle crab. And their jungler can say, screw it, I'm going to stop doing scuttle and just come and gank you right now, right? So the 315 scuttle crab is really important. If you see their jungler with Nocturne on this scuttle crab, then you can play this aggressive. But because right now you don't know which scuttle crab he's on, um, you have to play a bit more passive here. So you have to back up. So we just saw this vision plant get taken. So now that we know where he is, you don't actually have to ward right now. This warding right now actually isn't necessary. And actually something that's 500 IQ, which I don't do that often, to be honest, and what you could do right now, but it's kind of risky, is since we see their jungler top, and we know that their jungler path top, that means when he resets, he's going to path bot and take this golems next, right? It's most likely still up, um, the golems. And you know that when he backs, he's he path top side, all these camps are down. After he takes this, he's going to reset, and now he's going to be pathing towards bot lane. So the idea here is, if you wanted here a really good ward, is if you, because Rakan's safe with his W, right? You can actually walk up like this here, place the ward over the wall, and then W out this way and come back to lane. And that way when Hecarim resets and walks towards lane, he'll come down to do this golem camp, and you'll get vision of him here and know when he's there. But this is super high IQ stuff anyways, but I just felt like noting the fact that with your ward, this is a really high value ward to place right now if you can get it off. But there's nothing wrong with placing your ward here, which is what you're going to do. This is perfectly fine. But if you have the ward there, you get notice of him just a bit earlier. Because it's very unlikely that Hecarim's not going to go straight to his golems after he resets. Risky, but good sidestep. I like it. I like it. Playing aggressive. I like to see it. This is, by the way, this is good positioning. This is what you should have been doing before. See how you're now standing up front and zoning him from the wave? You should have been doing that earlier. Right? So like I said, by the way, you can see now, Hecarim, right? Where is he going? He's going to path towards his scuttle crab down here. Okay, he's not. He's Oh, he's going towards this scuttle. Yes. But see, that's why it's good, because this ward still doesn't even help you versus the scuttle gank, right? Your ADC warded here, which will ward this. And if he had gone to his golems, this ward would have spotted it, right? So that's why I'm saying those wards are good. This ward here that you placed isn't really giving you that much value, but it's honestly not bad, though. And like I said, your ADC should have warded the, the, goal, the scuttle. Um, you need to back up. Back up. Run, run, run. See, this is why it would have been better if your ADC warded the scuttle instead. Because then you would have got vision of this earlier. But it ended up working out. Um, I actually think there's a world where you just turn on that Hecarim and kill him, to be honest, by the way. Just saying. So one thing you have to note is minions do a crap load of damage. Minions, right? These do 12 damage each. So this is like 30 damage per auto. And the casters do 27, right? So that's um 90 120 these all do 120 damage per auto on the hecarim your adc does 87 so all these minions actually out dps and adc so there's actually a world based on the fact that swain is there you probably i think the best play here it would have been ballsy but i think especially with double sums up you walk towards hecarim and you w hecarim I mean, I don't know how Hecarim interaction works. He might be able to cancel your W with his E, but either way, after you go on Hecarim, you can always E to your ADC, ADC right? Because your AD, E's coming up. So I think the best play here is you walk up and W Hecarim, Q him, auto attack, and then when these guys try to collapse on you, you W onto your ADC. And there's a chance your ADC can combo the Hecarim while it's down, but the ADC could, like, in your knockup, get the things down in feathers. So I think the best play here would have been to just turn on the Hecarim. But it's risky. I understand why you're doing this. It's not a big deal. But I feel like... Oh, what the? Where did Lee Sin come from? What the hell is... Oh, he tp Oh my god, and even... Dude, your Lee Sin was TPing in. Yeah, you definitely should have gone on Hecarim there. Oh, well, it works out. Good job, good job. Thank you for follow FYBSI. If you guys didn't know, this VOD review is being redeemed by channel points below. If you watch me and get channel points, you can get free VOD reviews. Or you can donate $20 for a VOD review. If it's donated VOD reviews, I do it off stream. Because um, I want to give better quality. But for channel point VOD reviews, I just do it on stream like this. Anyways, um, yeah, push and go help your jungler with the dragon. Seems like a good play. Um, he's freezing. That sucks. Maybe you guys should have pushed it. I'm surprised people in bronze freeze waves. That's, Dude, honestly, the level of League of Legends play, like when I first started playing League, people didn't even know what freezing was in freaking like anything. Anything below diamond, people didn't even know what freezing a wave was. And this is bronze three, and the enemy support froze away for his ADC. Like... The level of play in League of Legends over the years has definitely gone up a crazy amount when you think about it. And I feel like Bronze Elo is better than Silver Elo. <laughs> That's because they're all hard stuck gold players. They all deserve to be gold, but they're hard stuck because their teammates suck. They don't both all belong there. Hashtag what every single Bronze player will say. Your ADC is resetting, you should just reset now. 
Oh, how much gold do you have? Nice. So you want to be buying your boots one and probably a ruby crystal here. Ruby crystal or even boots of Swifties is okay here. So basically here, what I would say is boots of Swifty, if you're looking to roam to a lane, you probably boots of Swifties is fine here. And boots of Swifties is good too because it just helps you dodge this guy's E. So if you were looking to roam, boots of Swifties is good, but you can see mid lane. Actually, mid lane is kind of in a roam angle right now, to be honest. Uh, he's probably just dead anyways. And top's not, so you don't need to upgrade your boots too. So it's probably just getting the, uh, the ruby crystal. Ah. I don't like this. This was really bad. Really, really bad. You had 400 gold and you're, instead of getting a ruby crystal for 150 HP, you're getting 50% mana regen. This is really, really bad back. This just lowers your all-in. This is playing This is playing for a poke lane. You're, this mana regen says, oh, I want to spam my Q and poke lane. But your versus a Varus and a Swain. Are you ever going to outpoke these guys with your Q? No. You're looking for all-ins. You're going all-in on the Varus and you're trying to kill him in an all-in. This doesn't help your all-in. It just helps your lane sustain. Um, but it's okay. It happens. But you definitely should have gone for the HP instead. Like it could be gold if I played more, but maybe my team uh, kills my games and fun. Hey, it's all okay. fun. It's just for fun. Just remember at the end of the day, it's just for fun. As long as you're having fun, that's all that matters. And if you're not having fun, I would recommend quitting or playing normals. But it's all about having fun. Um, It's okay. The only thing I would say is try. Rule of thumb, guys. Always, if you can, engage on the ADC. So does anyone see right here an angle where we could have engaged on the ADC? So wait for it. Maybe there wasn't. I was thinking he could have eaten his ADC and gone in, but... Yeah, man, like, literally the range here is the same here. I know you didn't have vision of it, but I feel like you could even E to your ADC to get that small amount of distance and go on their ADC. But I understand the fact that you just didn't have vision. So you just got scared, I guess. But if you can, try to go on the ADC. See why this is going badly? Because you engaged on the support. And because you engaged on the support, their ADC was able to free DPS. And then out of the fight, you just lose because you went on the ADC. I mean the support. So like rule of thumb, always go on the support. So, so far the big topics we've talked about this game so far, just as a quick recap is um abuse enemy cooldowns when the enemy's cds are on cooldown abuse it if you can um engage range people have an imaginary circle to play around right so play on the edge of that circle um always engage on the adc and um get vision for the scuttle crab at the 315 just watching this is making me feel like i'm at school listen kiddos there's a test tomorrow so you better study up hard and you better take notes because i'm deleting the vod after this after the session i'm deleting the vod <laughs> so you better be paying attention and taking notes. Nice. Good job. Nice, nice. Uh, leave your... Ooh, you just got to keep auto-attacking ADC there. Okay, he dies anyways. Sometimes it's better to ditch your ADC though. Right? I feel like there's a world here where as you see this happening... First of all, if you just reacted quicker and just ulti and went straight on their ADC, you could have just killed the ADC and then maybe let left, but you just waited too long. As soon as this came in, the first thing I was thinking is, it's mostly because I'm used to playing Nico. As Nico, I would have sent my clone this way and just ran this way and then watched them chase the clone as I go that way. So it's mostly because I'm a Nico main why I'm thinking like this, but like my first thought when I'm seeing this is, there's no way with this HP that I'm making it to this tower. The odds of me just going this way and maybe juking them is a lot higher than going this way. So your instant reaction should have been ulti all in their ADC and go this way. And as hopefully you can kill them quick enough, they can get away. But yeah. I uh, just saying I'm loving the stream. Where have you been this whole time? <laughs> I've been here playing Nico support six days, five days a week from six to four to ten PM EST. So the wave sucks. So the wave's gonna push the enemy because one, two, three, four, five, six, seven minions compared to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So it's gonna push the enemy. That sucks. Um, what sucks about it pushing to the enemy is it actually opens a window, and this goes for both sides. So if you were on this side as the Swain, what you would see is that your ADC is gonna go bot and be able to farm this wave under its tower because it's pushing to him. So as Swain right now, he should be looking for a roam angle where he can go gank mid or gank top. You on this side don't have the same luxury. You have to go bot because your ADC 
has to shove this wave into tower. And if, Rak say Swain doesn't roam. So say you roam here and Swain doesn't roam, right? Well, now Varus Swain are freezing the wave here and your ADC can't farm and your ADC probably gets tilted and dies trying to get CS. And it's your fault. So as Rakan, you have to go bot to help break this freeze. But Swain can go do whatever he wants right now. So um, you should be pinging question mark pings to your team and stuff to be like, yo, watch out. Swain can be roaming. Before we talk about that, one thing I want to say about this warding right here. Linus Lessons, hi, hi, hello. One thing about warding this wall here is I prefer to ward over the wall here. And the reason is because, first of all, while you're killing this pink ward, at any point, Swain could have been right here and just thrown an E at you and they could have just all into you, right? Like, Swain virus could have come here. So if you put the ward over the wall, it gives you vision while you kill the ward. And second of all, if Swain, okay, Swain didn't buy a control ward, but if he did, he would just place it and kill your ward anyways. So if you put the ward here, it gives you safety while you kill the ward. And two, if Swain puts a new control ward down, it doesn't spot your ward. But good little all in that you found. Good stuff, good stuff. See, I like this. See, why weren't I get that you were feeling scared before, but like this positioning, like look how you're standing in the bush and zoning both of them from the wave. That's what you should have been doing, like level one and two and three and stuff. Like you're playing perfectly, actually. Like this is the max range of his, his E, right? You're playing at the max range mark, like I was saying, and you're zoning them from the wave. You should have been doing that earlier. I guess you didn't back yet. Oh, you back for boots mobility. Mm, again. I don't think Boots and Mobility is the play here because you want. I think you really wanted Merc Treads this game. Merc Treads to counter these two. And Boots and Mobility, usually you're going to be roaming, but you didn't even roam with it, right? So, Lost Power of Unity Legs, not my VOD review yet. Yeah, it's all good. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't like the Boots and Mobility here. I think Merc Treads was way better versus this lane and versus this team comp. Okay, so one thing. They just popped Rift Herald mid. Oh, your whole team's dead, though. Never mind. I was going to say you should go help them with a the push, but they're all dead. You want to learn when I should roam? Well, so far, you haven't really had an opportunity to roam. Like, right now, if your mid lane wasn't dead, you could roam. While the wave's pushing to tower, right? So you want to leave. You want to push the wave to tower, because when you push the tower, it always pushes back to you, right? So this would have been a good time to roam, but unfortunately, mid's dead. And the last time you backed, you had to come bot because the wave was pushing to the enemy. So, like, you haven't really had an opportunity yet to roam. Nice. So now abuse the cooldown. Even though I said you should usually engage on the 80s, the the 80s. Well, this guy sucks. He's not walking up. He should be walking up with you. By this point, the ADC should be here. That way you can engage on him. But um, since he has no E up, that means he has no CC anymore. Only this guy's ulti. I don't think it's a bad angle to just W here and pop your ulti and ignite him. You might be able to just burst him with her uh, QE. I definitely think it was okay. Mm, you're kind of close to tower with no minions, though. It's fine to not, but... Definitely there was a window because his E was down. But the Varus ulti might have been able to Varus ulti you and then maybe you get pulled under tower. So maybe it wasn't a good idea. Okay, so you want to know when to roam? This is how you know when to roam right now. So right now, your bot lane duo has no way to pressure power plates whenever you shove it in, right? So that's why you're freezing it to look for all-ins, because you can freeze and look. Your e bot lane has no way to push tower plates, but if you wanted to roam right now, it's perfectly fine. You just kill these minions, like help your ADC push, and literally you can just roam mid now if you wanted, and chill. And if Kassadin, you just wait. And when Kassadin uses, you chill like right here in this bush, and then come here. And when Kassadin uses his Aran, you can go in, right? So like you could roam right now if you wanted. You just have to shove this wave. But you're probably not going to. But I know you just said you wanted to learn when to roam. I'm just saying, like, right now, you could if you push the wave. Go in on their ADC. Go in. No, no, no. Go in on their ADC right there. That was legit a free all-in. Okay. It's okay. I rate you trying to abuse the cooldown. Oh, see, look. You know when I said you could roam mid, by the way? You would have been here for this if you had. 
but it's hard for me to just teach you. I have a YouTube series on how to support series, and I have a YouTube video all about um, roaming, so you can check that out if you want to learn how to roam. But basically, you just the rule is you need to shove wave and roam, and you can roam whenever you want. There's not really, a, as long as the wave is fine for your ADC, there's not really a bad time to roam. It's just whenever there's nothing to do and you don't feel like you can get a lean in your lane, you just roam. Just shove mid in, yeah. Just shove mid, take plates. They are go back bot, it's fine. But like they're just camping, it's kind of hard. I feel like here it would have been perfectly fine for you guys to just stay mid and take plates, right? Take a plate. If you when you to roam, yes. But if you give them a good wave management and ping them B, it's usually fine. I played in low elo, and most times if you give them a good lane state and spam ping them B, um, it'll be fine. This is really bad because you just blew your ulti and now you're fighting. It was bad for you to fight without without ulti, but your ADC also could have ulti to dodge this guy's E, so it's not all your fault. But you definitely shouldn't be fighting when you don't have your ulti up. Or ignite. You kind of need ignite to fight Swain with his once he has ulti. Like you can never fight Swain and go kill him with ulti up without ignite. Because again, ignite cancels healing. One sec, let's go see if you could have roamed or not, right? Because you want to learn about roaming. So we'll focus on roaming. Yep, thank you for the posture check. So you're coming back from base. They pushed a tower. That means this wave is always pushing to the enemy, which means that you can't go top because the wave will be really bad. So the wave will be slow pushing to the enemy. And if the enemy just stops farming and lets it freeze towards them, you'll be too far. So you don't have an option to roam top because you'll be too far away from bot. But you can roam mid because even if they freeze it he like here, your ADC will be fine. So like right now, on your reset, you can just walk mid if you want. Like walk around here, walk with Hecarim or to like counter gank the Hecarim or something. You can, it's fine. Like after a reset, you should always look to walk towards mid for the most part if you can. But unfortunately he died, so yeah, just go bot. Nice. I actually think this is good because I think their ADC recalled. Nice. Really good stuff. You probably should have popped your ult to secure it um, instead of not RNGing it, but it's fine. So right now, by the way, with this free time where you can't hit tower anymore, right? Like you can't hit tower, their ADC's back. And you have two wards up. This is a perfect time for you to go get this ward here. And get a ward here. Here and here. Right? And if Hecarim tries to gank from this way or this way, you'll see it way before they get to this ward. So I'd walk up here and get a ward here. Walk here and get a ward here. Or even walk up and get a ward here. And then just chill here and see if you can gank mid or something. Right? A rule of thumb, whenever you shove to tower, you're free to roam. Anytime you shove to tower ever as a support, you can roam after you shove it to tower. Just ping your ADCB. Like rule of thumb, shove to tower, you can roam. I need to deep ward more. Well, it depends on the scenario. We just, we see their jungler top, right? So the question is, is if I go in the jungler, can I get caught? Well, support's dead, so that's not catching you, right? Ping your ADC B, yeah, like the alert ping. Ping them back. B is in back. Um, so yeah, how would you get caught if you go? Well, their Darius is dead and their support are dead. Their ADC is here, right? And their jungler's top. So the only person you can run into in the jungle here is Cassidin. And that'd be pretty low chance. And I don't even think Cassidin can kill you. Like, you can probably just ulti for move speed and W out. But, like, if we didn't see Hecarim top, right? If we don't see Hecarim top, then you can't go for deep wards. It's only because we have vision on the Hecarim that you could go for deep wards. Because, like, right now, look at You're actually getting nothing accomplished. You're just walking around. You could be right now walking here and getting a ward right here. To be honest, it might have been a bit risky, but I feel like when he started charging his Q, he moved really slow, and you were in the bush and he didn't see you. I feel like you just pop your ulti here, run to there, and then W onto him, and you probably just kill ADC. Straight up. But I'm not trying to focus. I just want to focus mostly on concepts. I feel like 
a lot of coaches, all they do is they talk about your mistakes you're making. I'd rather focus on concepts. So, like, I think you could have killed him there if you played better, but that's not important. Don't worry about that. It's not a big deal. Just focus on the concepts of, like, when's a good time to roam and how to roam. These are, like, things that'll help you improve. Focusing on, like, oh, I should have engaged there and, like, thinking about that stuff doesn't really matter. It's just, like, just note, you know, you're missing some angles. Okay. I like it. Yes, yes. Only thing I don't like about this is you didn't ulti the whole time. Or did you? It just didn't show up. Oh, it was open, yeah. Really good. So again, it's like when you, you improved from before. Over here, when your ADC got caught, you went on the support. And here this time, you went in on the ADC. Really good stuff. Good stuff, good stuff. Nice, ooh. Okay, so again, the concept we taught before about roaming, right? So the wave is being pushed to the enemy tower, and now it's going to start pushing back to you. Which means you're free now. You can roam top, you can roam mid, or you can go back bot. It's up to you, but I'm just saying right now, you have an opportunity where you can roam wherever you want on the map. Because see, the idea is, is that because their minions got stopped under tower by the minions, see how they're coming together a bit more grouped up, and they're all attacking that minion together? See? Right now, their minions, like your cannon is hitting that, and your melees are hitting that. But their cannon, their melees are hitting that, and their cannon's hitting that. They're not all hitting the same because the tower hit wave. So this is always pushing back to you now. Right? It's very slight, but you can see that your minions are... Oh, wait. RNG. Well, either way. So like, like I said, right now you're walking straight bot, but there's no point. You should be walking towards here. If you're not sure where to roam to, it's usually the safest bet is to just move towards your jungler. So here's where your jungle is, right? If you roam here, you could get caught by their Hecarim and stuff. But if you roam here, you're with your jungler. So like off reset, you could have just gone straight to your jungle top side because your ADC should be fine under tower here because the way it's pushing towards her. I'm just going to fast forward a bit because we've got to do another VOD review after this and it's only 9.30. And we've gotten you a lot of concepts. It's going to be hard for you to absorb more information anyways for the most part. This is a bad ward and I'll tell you why. Um, look at the objectives on the map. What objectives are we going through? So all f tier 1 towers up, but there's no Herald and there's Dragon up. So you're warding the side of the map where the objective isn't. This is the objective. You're much better off getting vision here than getting vision over here. Plus your team's also here. So they're kind of giving you like, consider your teammates like walking wards, right? So like you have a ward right here and you have a ward right here. So this ward isn't that useful, but you have no vision here. So like coming over and placing a ward over the wall right here is like way more high value because now you're getting vision here and it's on the side where the objective is. Right, like right now you're hovering around here, but Swain could have been there and like hit you with a pull over the wall. Okay, well he's right there, but I'm just saying like Hecarim could have ulted you, right? You don't have vision here. Wait, did you just pop your ulti? That's not good. No, you didn't. Okay, it was just bugged. Alright, good ulti. Good stuff. I like what I'm seeing. Your, your fighting seems to be good. Like in general, you seem to have the right idea with your combos and your fighting, your target selection. That all seems to be pretty good. So now you guys should do the free dragon. And you should probably recall soon because you're kind of running out of mana. Shove this wave and then recall. I gotta take the tie, that's fine too. Oh, so yeah, that's why I should just recall. That's why you should just ward. How's your warding overall? I mean, it's fine. You've gotten vision here on these. This is like the normal warding area. That's like your only first big mistake, but you definitely should have gotten some deep wards a couple of times, but it's been fine for the most part. I really don't like the Zeki's rush. This is something you do often. Zeki's is a terrible item in my opinion. I really don't like the Zeki's Rush. Like, they also have two APs and you're not getting any MAR. Like, you're way better off getting Locket or Shirelia's instead.
but it's fine. Builds don't even matter that much in low elo. It's all about thing. But the thing about Zeke's, is it really important? Is that your ADC, it's really about how good your teammates are. When they have heavy CC to counter. To counter, oh, the Shirelias? He has Shirelias? Oh, he does have Shirelias. Okay, my bad. I'm trolling then. Um, yeah. I mean, I think this game, to be honest, I don't know how much people buy it, but no one on your team is building anti-heal. You can't respect your team, too. I think next you should just build um, the Bramble or whatever for anti-heal because Swain has a lot of healing, right? And um, Hecarim has a lot of healing. And uh, Darius has a lot of healing, right? So I think building anti-heal here is probably the best because in this elo, your teammates are probably not going to do it. Use your ulti before you W. So two things about your using your ulti before you W is it guarantees the W will land. Because like if you W, they can like flash out of it or stuff. But if you W and the ulti hits, it guarantees it'll land. And also your ulti gives you move speed. So right here, if you popped ulti right now, you would have gotten more distance and you would have landed the W. But because you W without popping W first, you don't hit it. If you had popped W, you 100% hit that, by the way. Man, why is your jungler always dead? You guys could have done Baron if your jungler was alive. Alright, so right now, um, you should be looking to get... You have four wards up. So before you back right now, this is a classic scenario. Dragon spawning. You should get a ward. You have a ward here, but you should just get a ward here, here, and like here. Right? Get a vision line here. And then reset, and then you come back to Bar to Dragon with a full set of wards. And if they come in and sweep your wards, you have new ones to place. So you just get a vision line at this dragon and then back quickly and come you definitely should have placed more wars than just this though like you should have just like legit here like here here if you don't want to go deep like just get vision around the dragon and you're farming bot right now which is a waste of your time you're not yeah i'm scared to waste many of my resources early bad habit you need to break yeah i mean when dragon's spawning you want to get your vision around it and you're just wasting like you doing this is just getting your whole team killed I mean, your team getting themselves killed by playing like idiots, but if you were there, you could have prevented all of that. Wow, what's up, Baka? It all seems good when you guys do Baron after, it looks good. The classic ARAM. Best dinner ever? What'd you have for dinner? Um, you and your ADC should just group with the team, so it looks like that's what you're doing. You only have one ward left, though. Rice, noodles, and grilled anchovies? That does not sound like the kind of meal I would be hyped about. I mean, looking at the thing, it doesn't look like there's that much more to talk about this game. Looking at this. Nice try. Good stuff, though. I think we'll just move on to the next VOD review. Maybe there'll be better late game stuff to talk about, because this game seems pretty standard. Now you're doing Dragon. You guys win some sort of a fight and end the game. Oh, let's move on. Well, I hope that was got enough out of that. Let's move on to the next one that I have to do.